If you thought being stuck in one room while animatronics came after you was horrifying, it doesn't get any better with the removal of said barriers and free roam in Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach. I can tell you that much. Also, a fair warning, there be some gameplay spoilers ahead. Number 10, Vents. In general, the vents are just a scary place in pretty much any Freddy's world, or just in general, no one wants to climb an event. Not just because of the music man either in this game. The fact that one of the first things you have to do in security breach involves you crawling through a vent just immediately made me think, no, 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 no. I do not want to go in that vent. But of course, much of this game requires you to crawl around in vents because FNAF. And then there is Music Man in there, and then some vents are particularly creepier than others as well. So all around just lots of vents, none of them really a good time, as all of them help to trigger the PTSD that we all got from the vents in Sister Location. Number 9, Laundry. The laundry area of the map is probably one of the most nerve-wracking areas. There are just so many bots around and so many opportunities for everything to go wrong, and for you to just be caught and be completely jumped. I'm scared. Getting through the laundry area can also be tricky as the exit is located between the laundry machines, as Markiplier learned during his first playthrough, which is pretty hilarious. He ended up actually being stuck in that area of the game for apparently more than 40 minutes looking for the exit. He retraced his steps and he tried everything until he kind of stumbled upon the exit while like intensely combing the area and falling into it just kind of by accident. And I cannot lie, if he hadn't been the one to get stuck there for so long and I hadn't been watching his playthrough first, I likely would have also had a similar problem. Cause yeah, it's kind of hard to see. So don't worry Mark, you're not the only dumb dumb out there, I'm right there with you. Put a dunce cap on me, I'm also a big dumb dumb apparently. Also that type of thing in a game happens to me all the time. And I'm like what do I do here? What is the- also controls in games. Well, just if I'm not playing with a controller. I like controllers. I don't like keyboards. Ah, unless it's League. All right, friends, before we move on to this next spot, if you are loving this list and you want to hear about even more scary moments from this game, goodness knows there are a lot more for us to talk about. Be sure to let us know by giving this video a thumbs up. Number eight, Glamrock Freddy. So on the part one for this list, Connor did talk about the low power Glamrock Freddy jump scare, which is pretty scary. But I'm talking more about Glamrock Freddy just in general as a character. I have like a love hate relationship with him. And like Connor was also saying, some trust issues to deal with as well. Although I think mine have solely come from Sister Location and Pizzeria Simulator. I can narrow it down to those games and our experiences within the, those games. I'm just saying in FNAF, you shouldn't trust anybody, okay? People say they're your friend and then they scoop you and wear you like a skin suit, you know? So needless to say, there are a lot of moments where I both want to protect and be friends with Freddy and then there's lots of moments where like, I'm literally terrified because I'm certain at any moment he's probably gonna kill me. I'm like, you gonna kill me, Freddy? Do you love me or are you gonna kill me? What's going on? And not just in the parts and service section either. Just watching him stare at me in elevators or constantly wave at me from afar or continuously open up his chest cavity offering for me to hop inside. Yeah, I mean, even knowing he's definitely a good guy at this point. I'm still suspicious. <laughs> I'm like, maybe I don't wanna get in your chest cavity right now, Freddy. Why do you want me to get in there? You gonna, you gonna kill me? What's going on? Talk to me, man. Number seven, the wet floor signs. This is probably one of the first jump scares I experienced in Security Breach. I love how both adorable and terrifying these wet floor signs seem to be all at once. I love the horrifying sound that you get when you encounter one, their design, the way they follow you with their eyes, their lights, their eye lights. They're really just lights, but they look like eyes. Also, honestly, they remind me of Mickey Mouse in a way with their like, I think they're speakers that are on top of their head. I just love how they zero in on you in a creepy way. Like they're watching you for some kind of sinister purpose. Why are you watching me? Also, is it ever really wet where the floor signs are? I'm just wondering. I love that they're everywhere, but we've like never seemed to slip once in this game. I guess while creeping us out, they also just make us like super cautious and aware as Gregory. So good job, I guess, wet floor signs. None of us are slipping or they're just 
around to watch us and no floors are wet. It's all a conspiracy. Number six, getting lost. So I'm a big believer that security breach and the mega pizza plex were both made to be so large and kind of maze like on purpose, on purpose for creeping us out and frustrating us. There are tons of places for you to explore and tons of opportunities for you to get lost in this game and get turned around. Also the directives and even maps you are given are sometimes, you know, like not quite as specific or thorough as you need them to be. Why are these maps so small by the way? They're so small and I'm like, I don't even know what that is. Which leaves you plenty of opportunity to make missteps. In getting confused or lost, the game is thereby only adding to your discomfort and your sense of frustration at times, which I think is actually intentional because it kind of is weirdly perfect for a horror game to do as it puts you in a more like easier to scare sort of mental state. Also whenever you get lost there is a sense of timelessness and eternity that permeates, especially for a game where like after 6 we can leave. You begin to ask yourself, will I ever get out of here? Will it be 3.30 for all of time? For all of eternity? Will I ever be able to figure out what comes next after this part of the game? What am I doing right now? What's going on? What day is it? Who am I? Am I Gregory? Am I alive? I don't know. <laughs> I get very existential <laughs> with the security breach, obviously. Number five, animatronic teleportation. Sometimes these animatronics seem kind of slow when you watch them move about, but then can also spring towards you quite suddenly. And at times, if you turn your back on them, it kind of feels like they could maybe teleport or at least spawn to a place in game that allows them to appear right behind you. That's how it feels anyways. It's pretty freaky how you can think you're getting away only to turn around and see Chica right behind you, ready to jump scare you. I also find it disturbing when you think you've hidden soon enough, but it turns out you're wrong and then you just like get pulled out of your hiding spot and jump scared. The way animatronics can sometimes just appear seemingly out of thin air, it's pretty freaky. I don't know if it's the legit thing, but it feels like a thing. I feel like they can teleport. <laughs> Number four, laundry cart. Speaking of times when the animatronics randomly pop up and are terrifying, how about when you're hiding in a laundry cart? For some reason, laundry carts are some of the most terrifying hiding spots for me in this game. I think it has to do with the fact that although you're perfectly hidden from the sides, like anyone, anyone walking past who is tall enough to just peer in and see you could catch you. Yeah, I guess they're like uncovered, so I don't like that they're uncovered, but that your view outward other than looking up is severely limited. I don't like when I feel like... Like at least when you're in the photo booth, there's a curtain and you could, you're like, I can't see them and they can't see me. But with that opening, they can see you. So if you miss time jumping out of one, you could just walk into a cleaner or security bot or right into one of the animatronics. Oddly enough, I do like laundry in real life all right, but I do not like laundry carts and security breach. Feel like I'm just sitting in a cart waiting to die. <laughs> like this isn't safe. Also, I know that if I were walking past a laundry cart, I could see me in there, so. Feels, feels not good. Number three, control room. The whole control room segment is pretty terrifying, especially as it feels a lot like classic Five Nights at Freddy's, which we already know is terrifying because we've experienced it. During this segment of the game, you end up triggering an alarm, which alerts Montgomery Gator and Roxanne Wolf to your presence and sees them try to enter the control room backstage to get you as Gregory. The really scary part is that this time around, doors are not actually enough to protect you, as Roxy and Monty can basically just open the doors. Instead, you have to shock the doors as they try to get to them by keeping an eye on the security cameras to know when they're there and then running over to the door to electrify it by pressing a button and preventing them thereby from entering. The whole thing gives me the feels of classic Freddy's games with like a little mix of sister location as well, with the shocking and the buttons. While this is all going on, you need to keep an eye and an ear out for Freddy, who also needs help getting to you. When he appears on a monitor, you have to hit his corresponding button to help open the doors for him so he can come rescue you before time runs out. Number two, red light, green light. Connor talked about the endos in general on part one of this list, but I want to talk about the actual act of playing red light, green light with the endos. And in general, one of the most terrifying things for me playing this game has to be that whole red light, green light section that you play with the endoskeletons, which also are maybe like medical endoskeletons. I didn't get a deep look at like all those posters that are on the doors, but they're all really creepy. And on one, it seems like the robot pals can also maybe give you first aid, first aid or kill you, I guess. I don't know. Are they running towards us to try to give us first aid, but it just goes awry and that's why we get jump scared? Depending on the mode they're set to, 
I guess maybe they can do many things. Who knows? I'm not going to limit these endos. I'm not going to put them in a box. Not only is the actual red light green light game nerve wracking because these endos move really quiet and quick like if you turn your back, but also this whole area of the game is just creepy as all heck. Also red light green light is just a scary game, hence why it's probably one of the main and first games that we're exposed to in Squid Game. Also if you didn't think it was scary before, after Squid Game, you definitely would not like red light green light. And then you know you have to play it in security breach after Squid Game just like happened. No thank you, I'm good. Number 1. Sleepy Time Candy So this straight up freaked me out, like even just the concept of Sleepy Time Candy has to be one of the most haunting parts of this entire game. At the moment I saw an advertisement for this, it stayed with me forever. We are talking about Moondrop's Sleepy Time Candy. What exactly is Sleepy Time Candy? Like, it actually sounds like you're drugging people. Those groups of people likely include children because this is FNAF and this is the Mega Pizza Plex. Now granted, I do sometimes myself use Sleepy Time Tea, which like anyone can drink, which just helps me relax and helps me get to sleep and it's all herbal. So it could be, you know, kind of like that. Or it could just be lavender flavored candies or something weird. But the fact that Moondrop is associated with it automatically makes it a thousand times more disturbing. Although, as I said, the idea of it is already creepily problematic. What is sleepy time candy? Is it normal candy? Is it normal? Does it do something to you? I don't know. I'm so curious about it. What are some of the most terrifying moments that you have experienced? What made you scream out loud in fear? Do you fear the vents? How about the endos or moon drop? What do you think sleepy time candy tastes like? Is it lavender? Is it just normal? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. This has been Top 10 Gaming and I am your host Amanda McKnight. Till next time, watch out for animatronics and possibly sentient wet floor signs and keep on gaming on. Pew pew!